All right, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we got a special presentation here. We're going to be exploring the differences between an MEM and an MBA and I'm giving I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. I'm going to give you my opinion on which one I think it's going to be better. Okay, so this is based on a question that I got off YouTube, so I'm actually going to post a video of our or the question of our friend who asked the question so very thankful for your question and i think this is a very very interesting and i think it can help a lot of people so we're gonna go right to it but first if you are new to the channel welcome my name is alex Cedar, and here we talk about engineering career and personal growth and we're gonna go right to the presentation and if you like this video by the way make sure you like the video it really does help with the algorithm and also consider subscribing if you like the video here or any of the ones in the channel all right so the first slide here as we can see straight up just the title of the video and we're gonna go over here to the second slide which is gonna give us a little bit more insight as of what these two engineering or masters degrees entail so right off the bat uh, an mem which is a little less popular than an mba maybe i want to say much less popular than an mba uh an mem is more like a hybrid between technical knowledge and business now, obviously as we can see here the mba is more business oriented the i mean i guess you could figure that out from the name of the degree itself i'm actually going to take this off and so We'll keep going here with the presentation and we're gonna lower this because we're gonna uncover more information here. And here is a little bit more insight. So how does this help you? How, do, how does each of these masters help you? So in general terms, you know, that when it comes to the MEM, we can see that it increases your business knowledge, but it gives you more engineering examples and more engineering specific knowledge. It makes it more relatable to engineers. Now, when we're talking about an MBA, it's obviously a little more, it's more general and more business oriented. Uh, if you ever took engineering economics, I, I kind of relate the MEM to that type of philosophy where they give you economics principles in that class. When you take as an undergrad, they give you economics principles, but with engineering examples. Now that MEM, in my personal take, in my opinion, it gives you business principles, but with engineering examples. So it definitely makes it more relatable to engineers. Now, obviously, obviously, when we're talking about the MBA, we give you just we just get general knowledge on accounting, finance, marketing. But I mean, I think the background and the main purpose of these two is just to increase your business knowledge. One is just the MEM is just a little bit more relatable to engineers. Not only that, but it also helps you increase your knowledge in a specific engineering field that you may want to explore, uh, whether it's mechanical or electrical or industrials and whatnot. <clears throat> So we'll keep going here with the presentation and we're going to lower, we're going to uncover more information. So when it comes to education, what kind of education do you need for these two degrees? For the MEM, you definitely need a degree that is STEM related, a degree in the STEM field, uh, whether it's science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. Um, and I think also like personally, I personally think that if you are a math major or a technology or science major and you want to bridge the gap and you want to have an engineering title on your name, maybe an MEM, I think can definitely help you do that. But as an engineer, uh, since you already have all the technical knowledge, obviously you already have the title of an engineer. So you'd be okay. Uh, you, you, don't, you wouldn't get an MEM just for those reasons to have the title of an engineer, obviously. Now, when it comes to what kind of education you need for an MBA, uh, believe it or not, I was actually surprised, a little shocked to see this. Apparently, you don't even need an, uh, a bachelor's degree. Uh, and I'm going to list all my sources at the end of this video and at the end of the presentation. Uh, but generally, people that get an MBA, people usually that apply for an MBA have a degree, a bachelor's degree in one of the STEM fields and business. And also, there are other fields that are eligible to apply for an MBA. Okay, so we keep going here with the presentation, guys. Thank you for staying with me. So how long do they take nominally? They can take two years each. Uh, just like a regular master's degrees. Uh, it really depends on your situation, how many classes you take per semester. It can take two to three years, you know, but nominally we want to say that two years. Okay, so what kind of jobs would you get when you majoring either one of these fields and either one of these masters? Now, I don't want you to get caught up here. You can read a lot of the job titles here, uh, but I don't want you to get caught up in these titles because I was actually doing some research in many of these titles in many of these fields. And a lot of the times companies don't even require you to have a master's. Uh, 
they just want you to have a bachelor's degree with some experience um, so don't get caught up in this but the one thing i do want to mention that i want to be a disclaimer here i want to say that generally speaking the higher or the more senior a position is if you're an executive director maybe if you are a ceo or like a chief technology officer I want to say that companies, generally speaking, they really do want you to have a master's degree. Uh, and I mean, don't ask me why, um, but that's one of the things that I've seen. So if you have your eye in any of these positions, I highly encourage you to do some research and see uh, maybe you want to be a project manager. Maybe you want to be an engineering director. Maybe you want to be a logistics manager. Who knows? We all have our preferences and our own goals. So I highly encourage you to search for those jobs. Look at the description, look at the job requirements to see what kind of to get an idea of what kind of uh, degrees or what kind of experience they require so that you can so you can get an idea whether or not you're gonna you're even gonna need a master's degree so keep that in mind and i'm gonna leave the leave that one up to you now says okay so now the next question that we have here is can you hold such jobs without a master's again i want to say that yes but it's really going to depend on the company for an engineering position generally i want to say ugh, it's just tough because there's so many variations so many companies and it's not uh they, all the companies have different requirements, so it's very, very tough. But generally speaking, I want to say that for a, for an engineering position and you want to go up the ladder as an engineer, technical, you kind of don't need a master's unless you are an expert or a leader position as an expert and in, in an engineering field as a head researcher or a head development uh, manager or a lead or something along those lines. But for senior positions in a company, you may need an MBA. So it's it's tough it's really tough to make that call and i don't want to tell you yes you need to get this was this 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 degree if you want to get here because a lot of times uh it, it really really depends you know so i hope you guys understand uh so we're gonna go to the next slide here and we're gonna see what else we got here i even forgot what i have here all right so here is like the coursework like what what does it look like you know like like this is what i was telling you earlier like when you are doing an MEM, you're doing marketing for engineers, business for engineers, accounting for engineers. And then the other one is just kind of like, okay, business marketing in general terms and general business applications for the MBA, but for the MEM, it's business applications as well, but more related to engineering fields. So the bottom line is, in my opinion, it's like, they're very similar, you know, like potato, potato. <laughs> There's something that I put that I put here. Uh, at the end of the day, I think they're both are really going to be checking the box for a master's. Uh, I I haven't really seen based on the research that I was doing I haven't really seen a position uh, that requires you need to have an MBA a lot of times it just require you to have a master's with some experience uh, so when should you get an MEM as I wrote here if you like technology or you're more technically or you like more technical information uh, and you want to further your expertise in an engineering field an MEM could be a little more helpful uh, but if you just want to get some basic business knowledge and see like get business principles just general in general terms uh, an MBA will be more applicable to you uh, but also with respect to an MBA you know as an M as an engineer getting an MBA you already have the technical background so unless you really again want to further that technical uh, knowledge then an MEM will be helpful but generally speaking an MBA will do the job uh, also as I was mentioning earlier when it comes to the MEM uh, if you're not an engineer but would like to have the title of an engineer I think the MEM could help you so now let's get rid of this little box here uh, now also when it when it comes to difficulty you know an MEM because it's more technical and more engineering related it can be more difficult uh, but when it comes to an, an MBA uh, for an engineer at least or for maybe for anyone from with a STEM degree with STEM background it can be easier uh, because you already have obviously some technical background you already went through you already you already seen some stuff you know what I'm saying and then uh, also with an MBA you have more you may have more school options uh, because it's more popular and an MEM I there, there are really that many schools that really provide it I've only seen a handful of those but I think it's because it's a fairly new field so we go towards the conclusion here in the last slide that I have here, guys. We're going to keep on covering more information here. Okay, so here's my final thoughts. 
We're going to go one by one here and stay with me until the end because I'm going to explain what I mean by each one of these. So the bottom line, in my personal and humble opinion, is that this is just another way for people or for schools to squeeze more money out of its students. You know, I mean, you could literally just do an MBA and then you'll be okay. That's even if you need an MBA. If you are sure you want a master's and you need to get a master's, then sure, go ahead and get it. But I mean, ah, man, I, I think it's just another way for schools to get money out of you. And then so just like, it's just the marketing, you know, they can teach you here and there more technical experience. I mean, more technical knowledge uh, with an MEM, but I mean, is it really, are you really gonna use it, you know? Um, and then I also mentioned here that at the end of the day for engineers, um, like I mentioned earlier, a master's a lot of times is kind of like a preferred qualification, but depending on the position that you're applying to, uh, a bachelor's is going to do it with a couple of years of experience, you know, so to keep that in mind. Uh, and then also, like I mentioned here, if they do require a master's, a lot of times they just say, uh, we want a, an engineer with a bachelor's and a master's. It's like preferred qualifications. You just get a master's. They don't say, oh, an MEM will do it. At the end of the day, guys, it's like experience and accomplishments are ultimately what carry the most weight when you're being evaluated or considered for an engineering position. You know, like, um, but like I mentioned, I was mentioning earlier, things can change uh, the higher up the chain you go in the corporate, in a corporation or in a company. Uh, like I said, generally speaking, I want to say that for senior positions and based on my, my experience, I've seen a lot of people with MBAs, assistant and masters in systems engineering, climb up the corporate ladder. Those are the ones that have the senior positions, the leaders, the leadership positions um, when, it, when it comes to the business side of things. But when it comes to senior engineering positions, a lot of the times I've seen people with an engineering degree a lot of, and a lot of years of experience that really make it that far. Because the one thing that I want to make clear here, it's that you have two ladders, right? You have, so you have a company and then in an engineering company per se, you have on one side, you have the engineering side when you become a senior engineer or principal engineer or a chief engineer. And then you also have the business side when you can, when you become maybe who knows an engineering director, or maybe you become a, I don't know, like a chief technology officer, depending on what kind of field you're in. Uh, so you're gonna have these two ladders and obviously the, the the business side goes a little higher than the engineering side but i want to say that oh sometimes they're at the same level but i want to say that for the engineering side you may be okay with the bachelor's and a lot of experience again i highly encourage you to look at those positions on your own on a case-by-case -case basis to make the decision whether or not you need a master's but on the other side, the higher up you go, I want to say that it's more mostly certain that you're going to need a master's be, because that's going to make you eligible for application for, to apply to those positions, you know. Um, and like I mentioned here, here, guys, like a master's just checks the box. An MBA, a lot of times companies just ask, hey, just get a master's. And I think that's one of, that's one of the reasons why a lot of guys or a lot of engineers just get an MBA because it's relatively easier than a master's in engineering. And it also helps you to get the, a general perspective or general insight into the business world. That's basically my take. If you put a gun to my head and you tell me, hey, you need to pick a master's, which one would you get? I would honestly, I would probably get just go with an MBA. That's my call. Uh, it's more general, it's easier, or it could be easier than an MEM. And the any experience that you would, or any knowledge that you would gain with an MEM, you will probably just be trained. Uh, on the job and learn those skills over time and um, your field and your company it's going to be giving you that expertise that you would earn with an MEM so an MBA in my, in my humble opinion would do the job if you really are sure you want to get a master's but ask yourself whether or not you really need it before you make the decision you know so that's what i think and i have here a couple of other considerations to have like obviously cost of the masters and obviously the expected salary i want to say that they're fairly similar uh, it really depends again on your experience your field your lo locality pay uh and so that's why i didn't really put them on the main presentation so that's some things to consider. And then here's all the sources. I also checked out other websites, but here's the main one. So what I'm gonna do guys, is I'm actually gonna post this presentation on my website where you can go and check it out on your own and get a little bit more information. And by 
the bottom line is that I highly encourage you to do your own research. Uh, maybe if you have a specific position in your mind and you want to like go after that, okay, ask yourself, okay, what kind of education do I have? Do I really need a master's? How many years of experience do I need? And so keep all that in mind. And these are these are this is a complex uh, question and this is a complex decision. So I don't blame you guys if you're confused and like, okay, which one should I get? Again, I think this is just one more way for schools to confuse you and to get more money out of you. I, I think an MBA will still do their job, and but that's just me, you know, uh, potato, potato type thing. 